Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So finally, we are in the last week. Uh, if we can see uh, the things like this, we just have four hours. Um, in this case, it's in different days. So we're going to have four different days. But at the end, we just have a couple of hours to complete this course. Uh, we are going to end like very quick these four days, you know. Um, and I know that you are very happy for this because you know that it's uh, a big effort that you are doing right now to be in these uh, sessions uh, because I know that you have uh, things to do. Uh, you are giving us your time uh, to complete these courses, to uh, learn something new, to practice your uh, your new language, because in this uh, moment, this is your second language. You are acquiring um, like different uh, skills to develop this knowledge so you know that uh, you are going to do something very interesting with this information because we are going to learn how to communicate with other people and we are not going to be afraid of not understand what people is saying because we are learning how to understand how to give information how to communicate our ideas and also how to communicate our thoughts and talk about our feelings with other people and not just in Spanish. We are going to speak in a second language that is English. And these kind of courses are uh, have this objective that you feel like you are uh, talking in your own language because in this case you are practicing you are learning, you are listening, you're giving your time to acquiring that, that part because this one is going to be your second language in a very short time. But I know that uh, we are going to begin with this session because you know that we just have one hour and we are going to talk about um, a topic that we can say is a very basic topic. Um, it's one of the topics that we learn when we are uh, at the beginning of these kind of courses or when we are like in basic English. Um, but in this case, we are not going to do it like a vocabulary. Uh, we are going to do it like a practice we, because we are going to practice it and we are going to um, see if you remember these kind of uh, words, this kind of vocabularies. But it's going to be like a very, very short part uh, because it's just like an exercise or a, a short activity that we are going to perform with this topic. And I am talking about family. The topic that we are going to develop right now is related to family. Um, I know that we are going to talk about um, a grammatical topic because we are going to talk about uh, a tense, a part of the present tense. We are going to focus on a, one of these parts. You know that we have four a, in each a tense. And in this case, we are talking about present. So in this case, we are going to focus on one of these parts. A, you already have this information because uh, this one is part of the process in which you are learning um, in this tense. It's not like the the first time that you are going to see this information. You already have information for this tense. And we are going to begin with the practice that is in which we are going to talk about family. And then we are going to have the information related to this, um, this tense. But we are not just going to have like the structure, how to create sentences, uh, what are the elements that we are going to use for this tense. In this case, we are going to have something different. We are going to construct the information about this tense based on a question. We are going to have a question and we are going to give the answer for that question. And 
in this case, we are going to um, talk about the uses of this tense. And I'm going to give you for this one, a, like five different uses of this tense. So we are going to talk about five different forms or a, I mean, five different uses that you can give to this tense. And then we are going to continue with the, the other um, practices that we have for today, because we are going to, to like base these sessions in a small practices. So, so we are going to begin like the last week in which we have, uh, I mean, in which we had different practices related to the topics that we were like uh, learning. So in this case, we're going to begin with the image because you know that I like to share with you the images or the phrases in which we are going to base our week or in this case is a phrase that I like for you because I think that is um, interesting. I think that is uh, good for the things that we are doing right now. So in this case, I have one image that is very interesting or in this case, the, the phrase is very interesting. So you can uh, have this um, phrase in mind and you can keep working based on this thing. Okay. This one, give me a second because I don't like this form. Uh -huh. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So for the last Monday that we are going to work in this course, we have this phrase. And it says, you can fall if you don't clean, but there is no joy in living your whole life on the ground. Es una frase bastante interesante porque nos dice que nosotros no podemos caernos si nosotros no subimos. And in this case, it's based on fear. Estamos basados en el miedo. We are afraid to fall, and that's why we are not climbing. But we cannot live our life just standing on the ground because we are not going to do anything. Maybe you can say, ah, but it's secure. I know that it's secure, but it's not everything. You need to, to move. You need to find new things. You need to experiment different things. You need to, to have experience in, in your life. And this kind of courses is one of these things because you know that it's very complicated to, to learn a new language. And I know that uh, when we are learning something new, people tend to say that it's uh, like easier for kids to learn a new language. And that's true because they are like at the beginning of their life and they have like less problem that's, that us. Um, they are focused on these kind of things and they are very, uh, they are like a sponge. Ellos son como unas esponjas, ¿verdad? Los niños pueden aprender mucho más fácil que nosotros eh, diferentes idiomas, diferentes habilidades, uh, different things. But we as adults, like we have a lot of problems. We have uh, our jobs. We have um, situations that we need to, to leave. And we are maybe not thinking about learning something or we can say, ah, this is just for like, mm, someone is saying me that I need to do it. But you know, that is very important that we can have this kind of uh, knowledge. Es bastante importante que nosotros vayamos adquiriendo eh, estos conocimientos, porque el mundo así como está de, de actualizado y de avanzado, eh, necesitamos, ¿verdad? Ir mejorando, ir adquiriendo cosas nuevas. Y esto es uno de ellas. Entonces, podemos decir que aprender un nuevo idioma es esa, esa subida, ¿verdad? Es, es subir la montaña, es escalar, es atrevernos a hacer algo nuevo, algo desconocido. Maybe um, in the past, you like these kind of things. You said that it, it will be like very interesting to learn a new language, but maybe uh, you don't have like the time or in the place that we, um, you were, it's not like um, someone that is specialized in this kind of topics, or maybe you don't have this opportunity. 
in the past, but now you are having this opportunity, you, you now can think about climbing the mountain and go forward and you are going to keep going and you're going to do a lot of good things. Vamos a hacer increíbles cosas en el futuro si seguimos escalando la montaña y perdemos el miedo a caernos. Porque así como dice la imagen, you can fall if you don't climb, but there is no joy in living your whole life on the ground. No, si nosotros tenemos miedo de caernos, de, de cometer errores, eh, de equivocarnos, entonces no vamos a vivir la... O no vamos a disfrutar, ¿verdad? La vida si nos quedamos estancados en un solo lugar. We need to move. We need to create new things and we need to learn new things. Because you know that we are still learning until we are there. Así que nosotros tenemos que seguir, tenemos que continuar aprendiendo hasta el momento en, en el que nosotros vayamos a morir. Porque es, es una de las partes más interesantes del ser humano, ¿verdad? Que seguimos aprendiendo algo nuevo todos los días. Incluso, um, maybe some people can say, oh, I am a professional and I am working in my area and I have a lot of uh, knowledge and um, I am good at doing different things. But uh, when you are working, in this case, uh, with uh, technology, uh, with different like machines, or you are working with kids, you are learning something new every single day. In my case, I am working with, with children. And I am talking about kids from four years old to six years old in the morning. And it's a very interesting journey because I am learning a lot of things with them. And in this moment, I am a nurse. I am a doctor. I am a policewoman. I am a businesswoman. I am a... I don't know, a uh, reader with them. I am a creator. Um, I am uh, even, I am a chef or something like that because I am trying that uh, the kids are like, eat their food. So in this case, I am learning a, a lot of new things with the kids. Así que nosotros tenemos que seguir aprendiendo. Necesitamos seguir esforzándonos por obtener cambios positivos en nuestra vida. So, after this statement, we are going to continue with the topics or the topic that we have for today. And I was saying that we are going to talk about our family. So, in this case, we are going to have the first thing. So, in the document, you are going to see this one. The topic that we are going to talk about today is the present continuous. But we are going to have this activity at the beginning. So we are going to see this image that is like a, a family tree. You know, that is very easy to understand what is this activity about. Um, and we are going to see these images. So, so we have different people here and you have different words at the, um, at the beginning of the image. So in this case, you are going to see the words that you have there. You have the word cousin, you have the word father, the word grandmother, nice, sister-in-law, uncle, or, and wife. So in this case, you're going to read the names of the people that are in, uh, that are in this um, family tree. And then you are going to tell me who are they? Vamos a, a ver las imágenes, los nombres, y luego vamos a, eh, a decir, ¿verdad? ¿Qué miembro de la familia es cada uno de ellos? So, you're going to have a couple of minutes to read the name of every member of this family, and then I'm going to ask you what is the name of each, I mean, I'm going to ask you, uh, who is the person that is in that space? So we're going to begin reading the members of this family. 
And then we are going to see what are the answers or what are the words that you are going to use to express who are these people in the image. So let's begin. Okay, we're going to see. So we have at the beginning of this, or we can say at the top of this um, family three, we have two people. In this case, we have Andy and Martha. And Andy is the grandfather. And who is Martha? Grandmother. Okay. Mother. Grandmother. Okay, she is grandmother. the grandmother. Excellent. Then... Um, we have Chris and Sarah, and Sarah said that is the mother, and who is Chris? Father. 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 Excellent. Father. He is father. the father. Good. Then we have Donna and Manuel. Mm -hmm. Donna mm -hmm. is the aunt, and Manuel is? Uncle. 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 The uncle. uncle, very good, the uncle. Then we have Sam, Jumiko, and Jim. Sam is a husband, and he's, who is whom, Jumiko? 
Wife. 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 Very Wife. good. Excellent. Then we have brother and who is Lisa? Sister. Sister. Sister, Sister in? Love. 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 Sister in law. Excellent. And then we have Teresa. Who is Teresa? Cousin. Cousin. Uh, cousin. Cousin. Very cousin. good. And at the end, we have uh, Kelly and Jimmy. Yeah. We have a uh, Kelly that is? Niece. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And Jimmy, that is the nephew. Excellent. Very good. Now, we have another chart activity, but in this case, we are going to have two different things that we are going to say. In this case, you are going to think about the members of your family. And we are going to have two options. One is for single person, and the second one is for married person. Vamos a pensar en cómo hacer una descripción de nuestra familia, pero vamos a tener dos opciones. Uno para los que están solteros aún, y el segundo para los que ya están casados. Si el, en su caso todos ustedes ya están casados, ustedes van a utilizar la segunda opción, que es el married person. Si están algunos de ustedes o la mayoría de ustedes o todos ustedes están solteros, van a utilizar la descripción for single person. Entonces vamos a tener dos formas y vamos a ir agregando o diciendo cuáles son, ¿verdad? Los miembros de nuestra familia. In this case, we're going to uh, have like... Um, the nearest person. Vamos a hablar de las personas más cercanas. Quizás de el núcleo más cercano de nuestra familia. Uh, maybe we have a very big family, but we're not going to talk about all the members that we have on our family. Or maybe in the family of our husband or wife. But we are just going to talk about like a very like near people. Ok, we're going to have two. Vamos a escribir los ejemplos para empezar, ¿verdad? So, this one is for a single person. I mean, like this. And we can begin like this. Um, there are six people in my family. There are six people in my family. I have two brothers and a sister. And then we can like explain something else about the, the members um, of the, the people that we have in our family. Now, for married person, para los que están casados, we have here the example. And it says, there are four people in my family. And we can say, we have a son and a daughter. We have a son and a daughter. So if you can see uh, the difference between the example of the single person and in the married person is that you are like focusing on your space, on your house on the people that uh, you are living with, but with your husband or wife. En el, la descripción de la persona soltera, hablamos de nuestra familia en general, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando, ah, en mi caso somos cuatro personas en mi familia, tengo dos hermanos, eh, ah, o puedo decir, tengo una hermana, un hermano, eh, vivo con mis padres, eh, something like that. Pero cuando ya estamos hablando de una persona casada, nos vamos a enfocar en esa familia. Eh, somos tres personas, somos cuatro personas, somos cinco personas. 
Eh, tengo una hija, un hijo, tengo dos hijas, un hijo. And we are going to focus on that um, kind of explanation. But you can give details about your family. So, you're going to have a couple of minutes to think about your description. And then you are going to tell me your short description. Va a ser una descripción corta de nuestra familia. And then we are going to say that information. For example, um, there, there are um, five person, uh, I mean, five people in my family. I have um, a brother that is older than me. Uh, I have a sister that also is older than me. Then I live with my parents in the same house. My brother is living with his, his wife and my sister is single, but she is working in another place. Or in the case of the married person, uh, we are two people in this family, uh, my husband and I, and we have one year together as a husband and wife, and that's it. Así que vamos a hacer esas pequeñas descripciones dependiendo de nuestro estatus y podemos agregar algunos otros detalles sobre nuestros miembros de la familia. So, you're going to have a couple of minutes and then you are going to tell me your description. So, let's go.
Okay, I'm going to read some of the messages that we have here in which you are explaining or you're giving information about your family. So let's see what we have here. And the first one, there are four people in my family. I have my husband and two boys, okay. Uh, we have, uh, we are four, pers four people, I mean, we are four people. Uh, Reynaldo is my husband and I have two daughters. Their names are Sylvia and Connie. Their age are seven and five years old. They are uh, studying in, in a school, Salvadorian English. Okay. I am a married person, but I don't have children with my wife. She is still studying. We are almost in the same uh, in the same like thing because um I am not having children, but I am not studying. Um, but we are not like in that a specific moment in in which we can have like children. But uh, so you know. Um, I am a single person. I have two daughters, and I live when with one of them. Their ages are twenty-two and five years old. Okay, we are three people in my family. Uh, we have a son. His name is Josué, and he is three years old. My husband's name is Marvin, and he is working in maintenance. Oh, very good. I am a married person. Oh, I am a married person. Um, in my family, there are four people: my wife, my daughter, and my mother-in-law. Okay. There are three people in my family. Marvin is my husband, and we have uh one daughter. Her name is Naomi. Okay, good. someone else because we are going to move forward to the next topic and um, we have here another one I am a married person I live with my husband and my pets that's good there are cats and I love them because they are my babies I know I have a dog and that is my baby right now in our family we are four people my wife's name is Jensi she is 36 years old and our two twins oh wow their names are Andre and Caleb. I want to have twins too. I don't know why, but I, I, I would like to have twins. I am a single person. I live with my mother and I have one sister and one brother. My brother is single and my sister is married. She has two daughters and a son. Oh, in your case, um, your sister is the one that is uh, married. In my case, is my brother. So we have like, something uh, different but in the same in the same game because you have a a brother and a sister and i have a brother and a sister but in my case my brother is the one that is married and he just have one kid so in this case he his son is a teenager almost almost an adult someone else if not we are going to move to the next thing so, in this case, we are going to listen a conversation that is related to this topic because we are going to continue talking about the family. Oh, we have uh, we have something here. In my family, we are four people. We have two sons. My first son is 15 years old and my second son is eight years old. So, we are going to move to the a platform for a second.
So we are going to listen this information and also we are going to pay attention to the conversation that we are going to listen right now. So let's hear. What do they do? So what about your parents? Are you ready to talk about your family? I want you to play the conversation and practice it in class. Asking about families. Part A. Listen and practice. Tell me about your brother and sister, Sue. Well, my sister works for the government. Oh, what does she do? I'm not sure. She's working on a very secret project right now. Wow. And what about your brother? He's a wildlife photographer. What an interesting family. Can I meet them? Uh, no. My sister's away. She's not working in the United States this month. And your brother? He's traveling in the Amazon. Can you tell me, Leave? What do they do? Type your answers in our discussion box. Page 31. Okay. Um, we have some questions that we're going to answer on this uh, video, but first we're going to see something related to, to this conversation because they are talking about family. So we are going to see something first and then we are going to listen what are the questions that they are making. So we have Rita and Sue in this conversation and the conversation is called asking about families. Rita said, tell me about your brother and sister, Sue. Well, my sister works for the government. Oh, what does she do? I'm not sure. She's working on a very secret project right now. Wow, and what about your brother? He's a wildlife photographer. What an interesting family. Can I meet them? Oh, no, my sister's away. She's not working in the United States this month. And your brother? He's traveling in the Amazon. So in this case, the family of Sue is very interesting because the sister is working on a different projects related to a government. So in this case, she is not working on the United States. And the brother is working on a wildlife of a, or in this case, they are taking pictures of wildlife. En este caso tenemos dos miembros de la familia que son muy interesantes porque en el caso de la hermana de Sue es una persona que trabaja con el gobierno pero que no se queda en un solo lugar ya que así como lo dice está trabajando fuera del de país ese mes y también dice que está trabajando en un proyecto secreto verdad relacionado con cosas del estado. Y el hermano es un fotógrafo de la vida silvestre, de la vida salvaje. So, en este caso podemos imaginarnos que toma fotografías de animales en diferentes situaciones. And she is asking if she can meet uh, the brothers of Sue. And she said that it is almost impossible uh, because they are not in the same place. So we have questions. We have some questions at the end of this. Oh, okay. So we're going to, let me see, in which place? I think here. Let's continue listening. Can you tell me now where Rita's parents live? What do they do? Type your answers in our discussion box. Page 31, Exercise 3, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. Where do Rita's parents live? What do they do? So what about your parents, Rita? Where do they live? They live in Texas. Oh, where in Texas? In Austin. It's a small city, but it's very nice. Are they still working? Oh, yes. 
My mother is teaching at the university there, and my father is a carpenter. The Conversation You have a question or something like that? I, I, I don't know. But we have two questions here. Where do Rita's parents live? Donde viven los padres de Rita? She lives in Texas. They live in Texas. Oh, very good. They uh, live in Texas. In this case, it's, it's in Austin, I guess. What do they do? ¿Qué hacen ellos? ¿De qué trabajan? ¿O qué es lo que están haciendo para mantenerse? We're going to listen again. Pay attention. Where do Rita's parents live? Good what morning. do they do? So what about your parents, Rita? Where do they live? They live in Texas. Oh, where in Texas? In Austin. It's a small city, but it's very nice. Are they still working? Oh, yes. My mother is teaching at the university there, and my father is a carpenter. Okay, what do they do? Her, her mother her is mother. a teacher of the university and the father is a carpenter. Oh, very good. Nice. So in this case, the mother is teaching at the university and the father is a carpenter. Very good. Excellent. Now, in this case, we end this part of the family and we are going to begin with the part of the uh, present continuous. In this case, we are going to remember the information that we already have about this um, structure. But for this, I don't know why I take this out because we are going to listen another video. I don't know. But let me pay again, uh, put again the screen because we are going to see this information and then we are going to like remember the information that we have about the present continuous. And I was saying that this information is going to be based on a question. So we are going to answer a question related to the present continuous. And you know that it is, this structure is based on the ING form of the verbs. So we are going to add the ING form of the verbs when we are using this present continuous form. But in this case, we are just going to be, uh, to base on the uses of this structure, in which cases we are going to use the present continuous. But we are going to listen this information first, and then we are going to answer our question. Yes, she is. No. Are you ready to study present continuous? I want you to play the audio program and follow us on the explanation. Before we begin, I want to remind you, present continuous is used for actions that are happening right now. With this in mind, let's listen. Present continuous. Are you living at home now? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Is your sister working for the government? Yes, she is. No, she's not. No, she isn't. Are Ed and Jill going to college this year? Yes, they are. No, they're not. No, they aren't. Where are you working now? I'm not working. I need a job. What is your brother doing these days? He's traveling in the Amazon. Who are your parents visiting this week? They're visiting my grandmother. Again, it is important for you to recall the difference between these two tenses. Remember the simple present is used for habitual actions and present continuous is for actions that are happening right now. 
This is how we ask yes no questions in present continuous. Be plus subject plus verb, ing plus complement plus question mark. Read the example with me. Is she eating? Yes, she is. No, she's not. And to ask WH questions, we add the question word needed at the very beginning of it. Let's work it out. What is she eating? She's eating pizza. Note and never forget that we need the verb be plus ing for affirmative, negative, or questions when using the present continuous. So what are you doing right now? Type your answers in our discussion block. Okay, in this case, you have this information related to, to the structure, and you on the video can see that uh, we have like the very specific structures to create a statements and also to create question. So in that case, we are not going to uh, use that information to um, make this review of the present continuous. In this case, we're just going to focus on the, the uses that we can give to the present continuous. Then maybe tomorrow we are going to have a couple of exercises related to, to the present continuous, but today we are just going to um, answer this uh, question and we are going to uh, see the five different uses that we can give to this uh, structure. And on the document, you are going to find a image that I'm going to show you that is related to the stress, or in this case, the intonation in the statements. Remember that we were talking about the pronunciation of the words, uh, or in this case, the pronunciation of the of the sounds in a question. But in this case, it's just to uh, related to, to the to the, the positive statement. And in if you can see, you are just going using the falling intonation. In este caso, solo habla de el falling intonation, no habla del rising intonation como en las preguntas, sino que solamente habla del falling intonation. Pero esta solo es una imagen para recordarnos un poco sobre lo del de sonido. Tell me, Jose. Yes, it, it, for example, if I have a question for you, mm -hmm. what are you doing right now? Can you see uh, I am teaching English? Uh, uh, that is okay. I don't know. Uh, in the intonation, what you are using the WH uh, questions? Sí. For example, if, if uh, I, my question is, uh, what, are you, what are you doing right now? Uh -huh. In that case, you are going to use, well, let me see if, if we have the image here. Let me show you. I don't know if we have the image on the document. Mm, no. Because we are going to remember something to this topic. But I don't know if we have this image. Oh, wow. I think we don't have this image here. But in this can, case... Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm, no, we don't have the image here. We uh, just listen, I, I think, the uh, video in which we have the falling and the rising intonation that we have on the platform. In that case, when you are using like uh, very specific words, in this case, the the the, the auxiliary uh, verbs question, you are going to use one type of a voice and what you are using at the WH question, you are going to use another one. And when you are using this question, you can do it like falling um, because that is the point of this kind of question. And that's why we're seeing again the pronunciation in these um, statements, but we are not using the rising intonation because you can sound kind of rude in this in this um in these statements mm. 
sorry, I was uh trouble with the with the microphone. I don't know why. Okay, I think it's good right now. So I was saying that we're going to begin with this one. So the base topic that we are going to see is the present continuous. And in this case, I have a question, but uh, it is not like we are going to answer that question by ourselves. In this case, I have the information that is going to, or that we are going to use to answer this question. So in this case, we have, when should I use the present continuous? ¿Cuándo debo yo usar el presente continuo? ¿O cuándo debemos nosotros utilizar esta información? When um, should I use the present continuous? And as we uh, said, or as we saw on the on the video, um, we have a very specific structure in which we have the um the structure of that um, of this tense or this part of the tense, tenemos como esa parte importante, ¿verdad? Que es como lo que nos da a demostrar a nosotros que estamos utilizando esta estructura. Y esa estructura o esta estructura en específico um, nos dice que tenemos que utilizar el ing con nuestro verbo principal. And what is the, like, the word or um, in Spanish, what is the structure that we are using to create this kind of present continuous tense? En español, pues, se le conoce como gerundio, que es cuando utilizamos palabras que finalizan en yendo, ando, endo, and all of that things. And in this case, it is the same thing with this structure. But in this case, you are just going to use ing to form this information. So in this case, we're going to have the present continuous for um, two tenses or two different time in which we're going to explain or to express or to talk about. We are going to see the first part that is talking about present time and the second part that is talking about future time. Vamos a ver estos dos tiempos. Vamos a ver lo que es los usos para el tiempo presente y los usos para el futuro. We can use present to talk about future. Yes, we can do it. And we are going to see right now how it is possible. But I think that we are going to just see one because we, are, we have just four minutes left. Creo que solo vamos a ver uno de los, de los usos de el, um, del present continuous because we have just four minutes. So we are going to begin because we don't have time. And number one. We use the present continuous for things that are happening at the moment of speaking. These things usually last for quite a short time and they are not finished when we are talking about them. Lo vamos a utilizar primero para hablar de cosas que están sucediendo en este preciso momento en el que yo estoy hablando. Estas cosas usualmente duran un tiempo muy corto, tienen una corta duración, y no están finalizadas cuando nosotros estamos hablando de ellas.
So in this case, we have three different examples. We are going to make this short list with this one. And we have the first example. I'm working at the moment. I'm working at the moment. Next one, please call back as we eat in dinner now. Please call back as we are eating dinner now. And the last one, Julie is sleeping. Julie is sleeping. So in this case, the first use that we can give to this structure is to talk about the things that are happening in this precise moment in which we are talking. So like in the first example, I'm working at the moment. I'm working right now. You are listening in this moment. You are eating, you are sleeping, you are watching a movie, you are doing different things. So we are going to end this session and we are going to have three more sessions to complete this, um, this month, this module. So we are going to see each other tomorrow on the session number two. And we are going to continue talking about the present continuous. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.